Hey watch fam and welcome to another episode of Basically Watches. In this video, we're going to take an in-depth look at the Hoffman Racing 40. This is a follow-up to the YouTube video, the short video that I did recently, where I showcased two affordable alternatives to the Tudor Black Bay Chronograph, the Panda Dial, that was recently released at Watches and Wonders. What a great looking watch. But before we jump into the review of this watch, the Hoffman Racing 40 that is, if this is our first time meeting, my name is Oswin and welcome to the channel. I created this channel to share my love and passion for watches. And the goal of this channel is to create a highly engaged community of watch enthusiasts where we can share our love and passion for watches and particularly focus on affordable yet high quality timepieces. So if this is something that resonates with you, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And to those that have subscribed to the channel so far, thank you. I really appreciate all your comments and your feedback. It really means a lot and it encourages me to keep growing. If you do know other people, friends and family that love content like this, please also share this channel with them. And now, without further ado, let's flip perspectives and look at the Hoffman Racing 40. So here's the watch we're looking at today, the Hoffman Racing 40. As always, I like to start with a bit of background. So Hoffman watches are a relatively young micro brand and was founded by Will Hoffman in 2016. However, the actual project was brought to life via Kickstarter in 2018. They are based out of New York and are focused on reimagining classic watch designs. They strive to create aesthetically pleasing modern timepieces with the highest perceived value. In terms of the packaging, I thought I'd give you a quick look of what the packaging looks like. It came with this outer box and it's got that Hoffman logo there, a standard cardboard really, and same here with the inner box, it's just made out of standard cardboard. It's got your warranty instructions and the warranty details on the back here, so I'll just quickly open that to show you. Just the operating instructions and it talks about the movement and chronograph function and so forth. And yeah, that's the box that came in. Very basic, simple and elegant. And that's all you need really, because most of the time we just store the boxes in a cupboard or locked up away somewhere. Before we jump into the review of the watch and I talk about the likes and dislikes and so forth, I thought it'd be worthwhile just covering the pricing and the specs of the watch itself. So the Hoffman Racing series comes in uh, quads and a mechanical option. This particular one is the quads version. It's got a Seiko VK64 Mecha quads and it retails for 219 US dollars. They do occasionally have special deals on their website. So do keep an eye out on their website because you can end up with a decent saving. And now in terms of the specs, it's got a stainless steel case with a case diameter of 40 millimeters it's got a lug to lug length of 48 millimeters and a case thickness of 12 millimeters which for a chronograph is pretty decent and in terms of lug width the strap lug width that is it's got a 20 millimeter strap which tapers down to an 18 millimeter and it's got a stainless steel tank buckle it's got a nice aluminium tachymeter bezel and it's got that sort of gloss which gives it that Daytona or Omega Speedmaster professional look. In terms of the movement, as I mentioned, it is a quads movement, but it's the Seiko VK64 Mecha Quads movement, which has that nice sweeping hand action when the chronograph is started. So I'll just click that for you now to show you what that looks like. So as you can see, it's got that sort of mechanical sweeping action. And if you stop it and reset the chrono to zero, it snaps back nice and clean, which is what I love about it. The case back, it's got a standard stainless steel enclosed case back and it's got all the specs and features listed on the back. It talks about the model, serial number, water resistance, and it's got the Hoffman logo on the back there. I like that it's got the Hoffman logo on the crown as well, just the hedge logo there. Regards to water resistance, it's got a modest water resistance of 50 meters and it comes with a 12 month warranty. Now that we've covered the specs, I thought it'd be a good idea to show you what the loom on it looks like. 
Let me quickly switch off the lights to show you what that looks like. So as you can see here, the hour hand, the minute hand and the hour markers are all loomed. It's pretty dark in here and it's still usable. You can easily tell the time. So how does this wear on the wrist? Well, here's a quick wrist preview to show you what it looks like on my 7.25 inch wrist. So let me quickly strap that on for you. So yeah, that's what it looks like on my 7.25 inch wrist. It wears quite well, doesn't sit too hard. As I mentioned, it's got a 12 millimeter height and it's perfect. I think it's a very versatile watch for any situation. It's perfect for the weekend, casual gatherings, business environment, and can even be worn on a suit. I will do a wrist preview to show you what it looks like on a shirt as well. And here's what it looks like on a shirt. As you can see, it easily slipped under the cuff, so it can easily be worn on a suit and would look nice in a formal environment. What do I like about it? Well, for starters, for a $219 watch, it's got a lot to offer. It looks a lot more expensive than it is. It's aesthetically good looking. It's got a very balanced dial with the sub dials evenly distributed at the three o'clock and nine o'clock position. It gives it a nice balance and symmetry. And even the logo uh, at the top and the minimalist water resistance at the bottom, it, it's sort of very clean and gives it that nice balance and symmetry that I was talking about. It's got a screw down crown, which is a really handy feature. And it's even got a flat sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating. To put it in perspective, even Seiko and Citizen don't offer sapphire crystals at this price point. The chrono function, as I mentioned, it feels nice and crisp. And I love the way the chrono hand snaps back to zero when you reset it. It gives it that really nice mechanical feel. And that's largely attributed to that Seiko Mecha Quartz movement. One of the reasons I went for this watch is because of that sweeping hand action and sort of that mechanical feel that it gives. Another really handy feature is the strap. It's got these quick release spring bars which makes strap changing a breeze and no special tools needed. My only complaint with this watch is the leather strap. And I'm just nitpicking here if I'm being completely honest. I believe it's cowhide. It's got this croc print and it feels a bit stiff and cheap. Now it doesn't look cheap. It just feels like a $10 strap, but that's an easy fix given it's got a quick release strap and with its 20 millimeter lug width, you can easily upgrade this to a nice soft and supple leather strap. I think this would pair beautifully with a leather racing or rally type strap or even a native strap. Another thing that I really wanted to mention here, and it's not a complaint or anything, but it's worth mentioning is that despite having a screw down crown, it's only got a 50 meter water resistance. Now don't get me wrong, the 50 meter water resistance is more than sufficient in most situations. But generally speaking, a screw down crown is associated with higher depths of water rating. So it's interesting that they only offer 50 meters of water resistance with a screw down crown. So who is this watch for? I think this watch is perfect for someone who's looking for a Pandadal chronograph, but is on a tight budget. It looks good, it feels good, and it's definitely brown to draw a bit of attention or curiosity, which can often be a great conversation starter because it's got that very Daytona or Speedmaster look. Hoffman watches offer this model in a wide variety of dial colors and variations. So if you want to avoid that Daytona look, you can choose a green dial or, or a yellowish dial like this one. They even offer a rose gold and yellow gold case option. Obviously it's not real gold, but yeah, it's something to consider if you want to avoid that sort of Daytona look. It's a really fun watch at an affordable price point and is much better value than some of the other fashion brands out there. So it's definitely something worth considering if you're on the market for an affordable Panda Dial chronograph. So that's pretty much it in terms of the review. I really hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, you know what to do? Smash that like button. Okay, do it. Do it. Also, don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you think of the Hoffman Racing 40. Is this a watch you'd consider buying? 
And finally, don't forget to stay tuned for part two where I'm going to review the Dan Henry Panda Dial Chronograph. This is the second watch that I recommended as an affordable alternative to the Tudor Panda Dial Chronograph. Until next time, bye for now. Thank you.